Tommy Sosa trying to put his emotions aside and play. As for the fans, he wants to say thanks. When I run to uh, right field, you know, and everybody will there cheer for me, I just feel very happy inside. So I, something that I'm never going to forget. With Sammy Sosa on deck, the reaction positive. Here comes Sammy. And there's a lot of fans here giving him a standing ovation. Uh, I'm not really sure what that is. Lo and behold, let's focus on the game. Victor Zambrano gets Sosa swinging with the off-speed stop. 2-0 in the third. Tampa Bay bags full for Carl Crawford. Opposite way is only hit the game, but he had two RBI. Aubrey Huff comes in. He had four hits. Travis Lee also scores. It's 4-0 for Lou's crew. Bottom four runner on second for Sosa. Zambrano. Fools him again. Eight Ks for Victor. Bottom six, Cubs down three. Sosa at the plate. Zambrano again. You know, Sammy has struck out 11 times in the last five games since coming off the DL. It's 5-1 Tampa Bay. Bottom nine, another chance for Sosa with one on. Sammy. Finally, just three for 20, though, since coming off the DL. It wasn't enough. The Cubs lose by the score of 5-2. to two. Three, bottom three in 2003. Sox up a five spot. And Kim walks Brian Giles. That'll bring out catch and Jason Veritek, who's already homered. He majored in international relations at Georgia Tech. Tells Kim to throw strikes and tuck in your shirt. Kim went seven, gave up just one earn. Top nine, Manny Ramirez. He went four for four with two doubles, a homer, and four RBIs. Manny is 10 for 14 over the last three games, and the Sox are over their five-game losing streak. They win 11-4. Now, Grady Little looking for a, a two-game win streak in the second half of this. Top one, Nomar Garcia Parra against Jeff D'Amico. And he's now 5 for 10 career against D'Amico. Hits his fourth triple in his last four games. A couple at Toronto and a, well, a, a couple at Pittsburgh. Eighth triple of the season. Last one to accomplish this was well, Sammy in 1994. We're not going to go cork about it. Derek Lowe on the mound, a 10.33 ERA on the road. And so he needs to change his mojo, change his socks. Sox showing on Wednesday. And well, Todd Walker, he's showing the glove. That's a Sports Center top 10 nominee. Two batters later in the bottom of the first with the runner on third. Garcia Parra, glove me two times. The double play. Lowe out of the inning. Top three. Pirates down to run. Craig Wilson. Oh, he brought his big league glove. Pirates drop game two, 8-3. Low, seven innings, five hits, one earned. He gets the W. Glove hurts. Yankees and Reds, Hall of Fame broadcaster Marty Brenneman, part of ESPN's Living Legends broadcast. Reds down 2 nothing. Take it away, Marty. All that area in between, and there's a lot of in between from contact to touchdown. Aaron Boone jumping on a 2-0 pitch. He hits it deep into the seats and left, and the Reds are on the board. Aaron Boone's 14th homer. He was 2 for 4 with two runs scored, two RBIs, hitting 255. It's 3 2. Ken Griffey facing Mike Messina. Uh oh. Junior seems to be favoring something on that swing. The trainer had to come out, but Griffey, he would stay in for the very next pitch. An 0 2 pitch, no doubt. Griffey's seventh home run, tying Stan the Man Musial with 475 career dingers. It's 4 2 Reds. Let's flash back. Why? Here's why. Stan Musial. Ken Griffey Jr., the two have a lot in common. I mean, a couple of quirky things. I mean, strange things, like fate things. Both were born on November 21st. Both were born in Denora, Pennsylvania, and now they both have 475 career homers. I told you that was quirky. As for Griffey, he would leave later with a strained right bicep. As for Mike Messina, don't ask Joe Morgan. At the beginning of the ball game, Mike Messina looked unhittable. He was throwing strikes, keeping the ball down, hitting his spots. Then all of a sudden, he started missing. He got a fastball up and in on Aaron Boone. That started the home run parade. And he got a change up away to Griffey. But I think the worst pitch he threw was a ball down and in to Casey. He had him, he was ahead in the count, and he made a bad pitch. But hitting his spots was the problem for Mike Messina tonight. Messina allows four homers in a span of 11 batters the Yanks have lost. Minnesota at San Francisco. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Barry Bonds has tripled. Benito Santiago at the plate. He's got 26 RBI in his last 22 games. Uh, Torrey Hunter going to make the catch and 
keeps Bonds at third, says, I owe you one from the All-Star game when you picked me up in the in the middle and threw me around like a little man. Bottom eight, Giants down 3-2. LaTroy Hawkins facing Rich Aurelia. That's a ground rule double. Marquise Grissom scores and ties this ball game at three. Later in the inning, bases loaded for Elgardo Alfonso. He's batting just 221 this season. Mrs. C is not happy with Fonzie. Bottom nine, bases loaded for Bonds facing Warner and Kahn. Entering the game 373 lifetime with the bases juice. 500 this season. Cruz Jr. scores and the Giants win it 4-3. Puerto Rico, Jeff Devan, and he's uh, swinging a bat made from the wood of a tree felled by lightning. Sunday, two home runs in Tampa. Tuesday, two more homers, this time against the Expos, one from each side of the plate. Wednesday, sixth inning, Dan Smith, a solo job. The Angels are up 8-1. Remember, they hit six home runs on Tuesday. How many would they get Wednesday? Well, Devannon's going to get two, his third straight game with two home runs. First player to homer from both sides of the plate in consecutive games since Caminetti did it for the Dads in 95. Only the fourth player all time to do it, along with May, Frank Thomas, and Gus Zerniel. Three straight two home run games. Garrett Anderson, though, he would not be outdone. Facing Sun Woo Kim, his second home run of the game, but well, one shot ain't enough, Jack. You better make it three. Anderson three, Jacks, Angels seven big flies, and they win the ball game 11 2. Rangers Braves, Rangers down one nothing in the fourth. One on nobody out. Greg Maddox on the mound facing Alex Rodriguez. Opposite way and Gary Sheffield all over it. That's a top 10 nominee. He also had a two run homers 15th. Next up, Rafael Palmero and Maddox showing us why he has won 13 gold gloves in his career. Jeff Brantley, you were impressed, weren't you? Maddox tonight was a vintage painter, brushing the fastball on the inside and the outside part of the plate. Really got some great calls on the outside part of the plate, throwing a lot of strikes. But even better was his fielding tonight. He fielded his position. That's why he's a gold glove. Pitched eight strong innings. Great job by Maddox. Maddox has allowed just three runs in the last 20 innings. He goes eight in a 5-2 win. Seattle and Philly. M's have won seven straight, 11 consecutive on the road. Ichiro, he's loving May. Pat Burrell, well, he hated May. Take a look at what happened in May, although we are now in June. Ichiro, 389 in May. Burrell, 175. Uh, well, would they be June dandies? Ichiro leading off and continuing his hot hitting ways. Single to start the game. We'll see more of Ichiro later in this highlight. Bottom four, 3 1 M's, no outs. Burrell's bad luck continues. Robbed by Mark McLemore. That's got top 10 nominee written all over it. Burrell, one for three in this ball game. Top nine, Ichiro. Four for four. Rounds to second, but he's going to reach on the air. The Mariners win it 7 2. 22 road wins, most of the game. What about Houston taking on the Orioles? Bottom seven tie game. Mike Hargrove pulling Pat Henkin with runners at second and third. In comes B.J. Ryan to face Greg Zahn. First pitch outside. Morgan Ensberg comes in to score, so the Astros are up 4-3 now. Ryan, the struggles continued for B.J., his fourth pitch. Zahn taking advantage up the middle. That'll score Craig Biggio. That would do it for Ryan. Zero innings pitch, four pitches thrown, one wild, one an RBI single, and the Astros win it. And now tied with the Cubs for first. St. Louis, Albert Pujols' resume. Not bad. Includes an NL leading 370 batting average. Third inning, 4-2 Jays and Pujols. A dinker off Corey Lytle. He went one for three with a walk. Lytle, 6-0 on the road this season. Later in the inning, now 4-3 Edgar Renteria. That ball's going to bounce off the wall. A two-run double, seven RBI in his last three games, and the Cardinals take a 5-4 lead. Top five, RBI leader Carlos Delgado with the base is empty. Oh, there's nothing like a good piece of hickory. 17th home run, tying him for the AL lead with Soriano and Juan Gone. Top six, Lytle at bat, got his first major league hit earlier in this game. Jim Edmonds, oh, can't get enough of your glove. 8-5, Cards, third straight win. A's Marlins. You know what? These two have the most wins in interleague play. Let's fill you in. The A's, 66 wins. They're first. Marlins, 61. They're tied to second. Then the Braves, the Yankees, and the Mets. To the game.
This is a top 10 nominee courtesy of Juan Pierre, who also had two hits and that great catch robbing Eric Burns. Burns took the collar for a second straight night. Take another look. Juan Pierre back to back stunning catches. Top of the eighth, 5-5 five, five game, two men on, Tim Spooniebarger, Scott Hatterberg. That scores Frank Manichino, 6-5 Oakland. Bottom line, two out, Keith Falk on the mound, striking out Derek Lee. Falk is 15 save. The A's find a way to beat the Marlins by the score of 6-5. You remember when the Royals started 16-3 and, and Tony Pena was happy? Well, now they've lost three straight and 13 of their last 16, and, well, Tony Pena's not that happy. Rookie Kyle Schneider lost each of his last three starts, so he's looking for his first Major League win. We're going to look at him in the fifth inning with the Royals up one. Brian Jordan grounding out to Snyder. One pitch, one out. Adrian Beltre at the plate. Snyder's second pitch, ball low, and then third pitch, ball outside. Fourth pitch, Beltre is going to fly out to center, so we have two outs in four pitches. It's economical. Alex Cora at the plate. Snyder's fifth pitch is a strike, and the sixth pitch grounds out to short for the third. Six pitches. Not bad. He went six innings, four Ks, one earned. Got the W. So did the Royals, 2-1. White Sox, a season high seven games under 500 back in Arizona. Mark Grace paying tribute to his old mate Sammy Sosa by taping a cork to the end of one of his bats. How clever, how original. Bottom three, one on for Shea Hillenbrand. For the love of a D-back uniform, Shea's first home run as a member of the Diamondbacks. 4-1 Arizona. Top of the ninth, one on. Jose Valverde just called up from AAA. In to close, D'Angelo Jimenez. On the ground to Tony Womack. Womack catching Ryan Dahlbeck in a rundown, and he's tagged out. And then Jimenez thrown out, running to second. That's a top 10 nominee, if you didn't know that already. And in the end, it would be a D-backs victory. As for Jerry Manuel, we've seen that look before, Jer, haven't we? <laughs>